today was promiscuity to purpose. And I didn't send the scripture reading. I believe the woman of God was led to share the scripture reading, John 4. Now, if you, like, John 4 is one of my favorite um, chapters in the Bible. Also, yeah, that story of the Samaritan woman is one of my favorite um, woman of the Bible, right? One of. My, my ultimate favorite is Mary, and I'll tell you why. But um, the Samaritan woman is one of my favorites. Of course, I believe that that scripture is so fitting for the topic that we're talking about regarding promiscuity to purpose. But I'm going to refer a lot to that scripture. But then there's another scripture from my favorite one that I believe that the Lord was saying focus on her a little bit more. And I'm going to share some lessons that, you know, as when we think about purpose and we think about, you know, how we can move past the things that we have done in our past to you know, live this purpose-driven life, you know, what are some things that we can actually do? Now, if anybody know me, I'm into practical Christianity. I am not into the highfalutin, you know, tell me that I should not have sex before marriage, but I don't know why I don't, I'm just supposed to just, we are not robots, you know, God did not make us as robots, he make he made us with free will, and we all have, none of us are born saved, no matter how early you went into the church, you didn't born saved, and even if you got saved as young as say three four year old right we all have seen and fall short of the glory of god we all just trying to run this race as paul would say to the end now what i've seen in christendom since i've gotten saved is this pretense that we should be pretend like we have it together like we all born saved and we focus on the external things of Christianity Oh, ensure that my hair is natural, ensure that I wear the hat, ensure I, I prefer skirts over pants. Or, you know, when, I, when I'm at church, there are certain songs that play and I know when to raise my hands at the right time. And, you know, depending on who is leading ministry, I speak in tongues a little bit more louder. Or, and, and it's so easy for us to get into the root worship and pretend that we have it together, but then the same mouth that is Shandai, Shandai, Shandai on a Sunday, when you go home in the night, you are Pings Pablo's, your children and your husband, right? And your neighbor here. I don't know what the Pings and Pablo's if you're from Jamaica, right? If you're not from Jamaica, you know, ask a Jamaican friend what we mean, right? Because it's so easy for us to pretend in front of man, you know, get approval from pastors and stuff, not thinking about who the ultimate pleaser should be. Again, I'm putting out my disclaimer, right? So you'll always hear me speak very practically. Um, you'll always hear I share my personal testimonies because... I believe one, the word of God is the ultimate guide. You don't need to add or subtract to the word of God. But there's a principle that we see Jesus use in the New Testament where we call parables, which is stories. And you find that people remember stories in a way to remember the lessons. Anybody can relate to me, right? So you will always hear me share my story. Another reason why revelations tell me I overcome the blood of the lamb by the word of my somebody on a, on a well church, you know, know testimony, well church. testimony, come on now, right? So it means that I've learned in my Christian walk that I do have nothing to be ashamed of, no matter what anybody tell, say I do, or no matter what I've done, I I do have shame. Shame? Mm -mm. Because the word of God tell me that all things have been made brand new. My sins are as far as the east from the west. He says that there's nothing. Like if I blame him, tell myself, me get up and go down at hell and say, God, me no want nothing to do with you. His word say, my come for me. Right? So everybody's supposed to jump up and just start making nice. Right? Because even if I choose to go and lay my bed in hell, it says he will come for me. 
So because I know those promises of God, I have nothing to be ashamed of when I share my testimonies. And that is the first lesson. We're not getting another lesson yet, but for somebody that's on, that feels like you need to pretend that you have it together. I'm giving you permission today, you don't. Actually, Jesus love when you don't have it together. Come on now, somebody. Why? Because it gives him room for him. He said, in your weakness, his strength is made perfect. Come on, no, 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 no. Come on, sister. Come on. That's right. That's right. So when Come can on. God, when can God like work in your life? When when him say to the 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 the, the um the prostitute, the, the, the Samaritan woman, I say, no man, nine was born, mm -mm, girl. I can still use you. Right? When we remember the story of Rahab in, 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 in the Hebrews, Rahab's name was written, even though they, they, they call, you hear what, you hear one of the things I don't, I don't know if I don't like with the Bible, but I find very interesting in the Bible. It tend to categorize women a lot. So Rahab, the prostitute, why she could have just be Rahab? I don't make sure that she had one day the prostitute, you know, but the word scripture call her Rahab, the prostitute. But we we'll take it because it is what it is, right? But and I, 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 I soon come to the message, but I, I, I wanted to get this, right? So even before I get to the message, I want somebody to know that no matter what people define you as, okay, I was a prostitute. I was a homosexual. I was, I don't know, I was promiscuous. I was sexually molested. Um, my husband used to beat me or my baby father used to beat me. Like, no matter what you have, oh, some, some of you, you know, your family used to say you're mad. Some people say you chat too much. Like, like, there are so many labels that were placed on us. But then, so it says, and I want you, I want you to pause and think about what label was placed on you at some point in your life. So, like, she's Rahab the prostitute, right? Um, Crystal, the molester. Right, Crystal. The some of you, there, mm. there is a title, the, the, the stupid mm. one, the black sheep, mm. come on, um, the dunce one, Robert. right? But then, in all of that, Rahab name was still in Hebrews as a woman of faith, and that's what makes a difference. Is the faith that made a difference that can change our life and change our own or circumstance. And that is what my story is about. That is what your story is about. If you know are have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you are a woman of faith, you are a woman of, you know, you are now, you know, a baptized believer trying to walk. It is your faith that made a difference. So I want you to, as um, one of my authors would say, you know, shake that label. No matter what the label is, shake that label. So after the labels, no. The truth is I'm coming back. I believe most of you um, on this call are saved, right? I, I, I'm sure there are a few non-Christians that are on, but I'm going to guess that most of you are saved. If you say, say just... If you're, if you're a Christian, a Christian woman, I want you to just drop some one. And if you're not saved yet, because I don't believe you're a backslider, yeah, right? If you're not quite saved yet, you can drop a two. But don't worry, I'm not going to pick by you or anything. But it just helps me to know how the message is going, right? So I know that most of you, I figured most of you are, are, are saved, right? Good. So I see the ones I'm coming in. Great, right? So most of you are saved. So after we talk about the labels, God clean we up, Jesus take we and you know make we brand new. We know can wear the big hat. We know can speak in our tongues away. We're good. What happened is that we get into church now, and again we get into this routine. But many of us don't fulfill some of the promises and the commandments of God, and this is our purpose comes into play. So many of us come into church and we think our purpose is to go on the choir because we, we, have, we can't hold a little tune so we join the choir. Or, um, you know, 
the, the, the probably is a small church saying so you know, I'm the other choice that you have to be the Sunday school director, the singles director, um, the woman of the woman director, right? Probably you don't find enough women at the church. So you are probably are wear five different uh, you're the usher, you are the treasurer, right? And you find that you're coming to church and you are now these things just in church and again you wear a label and many of you are wearing the christian label not are the church woman label christian label but not truly walking into purpose not understanding that things you can do in church are great you should do them but that's not necessarily god's purpose for your life so here's what i want to accomplish I believe that the Lord want me to help to accomplish today is to one, help you to understand what purpose could look like for you. I'm not going to tell you that at the end of this session or at the end of my talk, you're going to know what your purpose is because purpose don't come overnight, right? Purpose don't come because you hire a coach one single time or you pray one time, right? I'm going to explain what the Lord has taught me about purpose and praying that you know you if you don't know what your purpose looks like or you you're not quite sure that today will provoke you to walk that out to want to desire to know that for some of you are on you kind of know you've matured in the lord the lord you kind of have an idea you know like chevron you know she write books and you know she's passionate about her mental health um you know i know dion is passionate about helping women dream you know so um the, the woman oasis i know that one of the, the the mandate you know is to go out and share the gospel with women and to help the, the broken right so some of you might know what your purpose is but here's it the god still kind of say for those who know, there's a little bit more deeper I'm calling you into. Because we can make this purpose become a clutch, or a crutch, sorry, that that is all we think that we should be doing. And that's all, that's who we are. So that's what I want to share with us very briefly today. So let I'm just going to ask you to just, you know, just bow your heads with me as I whisper a prayer um, just before I share. So, Lord, even now as we come before you this evening, Lord, we thank you for these beautiful women. First, I thank you for the woman of God that has been leading this charge. I thank you that for the vision that she has gotten to share the gospel to women and to help women to heal through brokenness and I know the amazing work that this ministry is doing by giving back and you know there's so many amazing things that they're doing Lord. Father thank you for the, the women that are here just to be provoked to go a higher level with you. I thank you for the women that are saying God I don't know what it is but I'm praying that you know somewhere something that the speaker said today will ignite that desire to want to know my purpose more but father wherever we are on our journey we just pause to say thank you abba thank you for technology thank you for just uh, to be alive in our soul and mind we thank you that you know we're not in the hospital and if we are even in the hospital we're still alive that means there's still purpose on this earth for us to do lord i pray even as I speak, let crystal totally decrease. Holy Spirit, you increase and have your sweet way in and through my life, in and through this speech. Let your will be done. Let you be glorified, mighty God. Let you be glorified. I'm just an oracle. Speak through me, Holy Spirit, and have your sweet way in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So come. I hope I have an opinion on because as I tell you, I'm a practical so I'm going to give you homework to, you know, yeah, right? But we'll soon, soon get there. So I want to talk a little bit about the Samaritan woman first. Um, so there are some things that even as I prepare, I heard the Lord was saying, I'm going to share a little bit about my testimony, but I want to go to the Samaritan woman because the story was, was shared. There are three major revelations that I want us to look at from that woman being a promiscuous woman purposeful woman the word of god says that 
in the earlier and it talks about Jesus and it we know if any if you're in church long enough you probably hear the story enough time um but the word of God there's the the word of God says that Jesus had to and I want you to kind of meditate on the word had to because based on what we hear theologians have said um, the Samaritans and the Jews don't mix because the Jews believe that they are better than the Samaritans. The Samaritans are almost a watered down version and them have them own a God and, you know, um, the Jews are God's chosen people, right? So the truth is Jews avoid going to Samaria. Samaria avoid Jews. But I've always found it very interesting in the scripture that the word of God says that the, Jesus had to go through Samaria. So when I pause, I thought about it. The fact that he had to, you could replace that word to say Jesus intentionally went through Samaria, right? Jesus purposefully went through Samaria. Jesus had an assignment in Samaria and he decided to go there. First, go ahead, go again. When he went, he went to the well. The, his disciples went to look food. Him and, and the lady came and he decided to have a conversation with the woman. Now, again, if you know, if you're in church, you'd hear that, you know, men, especially Jewish men, will never be seen talking to a Samaritan woman. And it showed later on when the disciples came, disciples were puzzled, like, why are you talking to this woman? Like, right? Because in those times, women were looked down on and the, 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 the theologians even gone ahead and said, this woman came at this time at 12 noon because she was embarrassed about her lifestyle right that's what they believe and she came at 12 because nobody would have been because the time is extremely hot nobody would have been drawing water at that time so she came at that time no it is customary from if you read the book of genesis you find that women are always going to the well um that well specifically was called a jacob well um where jacob and rachel uh, when Rachel came up, Rachel and, and, and Jacob met, right? And the, what you find is you hear a lot of from Sarah, Abraham's wife, right? Sarah went to the well. You hear Rachel went to a well. You hear um, Ishmael's mom, wanna help me. Ishmael's mom, what's the name of Ishmael? Rebecca. Hagar. Hey, yeah, um, Agar. Ishmael, Agar and um, Moses' wife went to a Moses well. Moses' wife to a well. So you find that this well is, I don't know if they might try to say, oh, I'm more thirsty, but, you know, as a single woman, me, me now go disagree right there. <laughs> That's me in a church and a little bit thirsty, but, you know, I won't go there, <laughs> right? But you find that women are always going to a well. So I guess it's Jesus expected this woman to be there. Based on the conversation, though, Jesus exposed the woman about her lifestyle. Here's what I want us to think about. And here's what, one of the things that a lot place in my heart to challenge us about. The, the scripture said a woman had how many, how many husbands? And I type in the chat, how many husbands? They said past husbands she had. They just read it, anybody? Nine, nine husbands, right? Now, I'm sure some of you, some of you are some of, I've heard Christian women, I've heard Christian women really chastise this Samaritan woman because they're like nine husbands, right? Enough that. Huh. Here's how I'm probably going to challenge some of us because, yes, we know there are some of you that grew up in church that probably the first person you marry is your husband, the first man that you have slept with is your husband. But the truth of the matter is, in the Jamaican society, many of us would have gone through many men <laughs> that are more than nine. I don't know, probably I'm me alone. So let me talk about myself, right? I don't know. Yes, we didn't probably get married to them, but we have slept with many men, right? In those times, as, as the woman them look upon a man, a man look upon a woman, they can get married. In our days, we take marriage a little bit. We're not really in a married thing yet, right? But many of us have gone through many men. But 
here's what I believe that the Lord is saying. I'll, we're focused on the men in this situation, but the truth is many of you have other husbands or have had other husbands and other husbands in this case is not necessarily man-man, but husbands such as your job, husbands, things that you are an idol, that are idols in your life, like your children. Some of you, your husband is your insecurity. Some of you, your husband, right? Your husband, so yeah, you have men, a man, right? It could have been your children or your child. It could have been your career. It could have been your education. Your husband could have been um, the unforgiveness in your heart towards your parents. Your husband, right, could have been that whatever label that you would have taken on. So let us not go into, oh, well, she have nine husbands and she a prostitute. <laughs> no. Because many of you have prostituted yourself with other things. Even as Christian women. Some of you are cheating on God with the church itself. Where you get caught up in church duty and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ himself. Some of you have prostituted yourself with so many other distractions. Your phone, social media comparison, your self-esteem, TV, your cell phone. So let us not, one of the major things why I love the story of the Samaritan woman is because when you, when you see women like that where they don't have a name for her, because they could have named her, they name Rahab, they name, they have other women in the Bible where we just hear them name one time. But then there are some women you just know them by their title, the Samaritan woman. So I want us to put our name right now because at one point, all of us have been the Samaritan woman. We have had multiple partners that, are, that is not God. But I know some of you are like ready for kick me off of the live. Shevani, you can't defend me. They said they can't, can't, can't kick me off of the live now. Girl, I got your back. I'm here to defend you. <laughs> Right? Some of you, your degree, only thing defined you is your title. Bishop, apostle, prophetess, ta, 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 ta. C, D, B, A, title behind your name. And you can never have a conversation with somebody if you better miss it. Oh, the missus title. Come on, I'm talking about the missus. No, I'm not. I'm not Minister Rob. I'm Mrs. Rob. Speak to me. So I want us to put ourselves in a Samaritan woman that at some point in our lives, we prostituted ourselves to something. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you are definitely right now prostituting yourself to the world. Because the truth is, before I got saved, you could not tell me, say, me never love Jesus because I read my Bible, my pray, I believe in our God. When me got a party, me I tell you when the grace thrillers them start playing, me I shandai, you're too bad, man, you're too bad, man, and you, you can't tell me, say, me not love Jesus, me just not ready to give my life to him yet. Right? And that is the thing of, again, Many times we come into, we don't, when we don't know Jesus Christ, because we're not aware of the spiritual things, we don't realize how blind we are to the things of the world. We think that we can read a devotion, we read our daily bread, we go to church when we need to go to church, we pray and we see things that come true and we think, we're okay, we God, we're just not ready yet. But then we come into Christ and then we still don't realize that if you are not married to purpose or tied to purpose, then you find that you are in the church and you're winning a wee, doing church things, and you don't, you're, you're empty, you're sad, you're depressed, you need to go and read Minister Shevani's book, Mental Health. So I want us to back up, right? I tell you. So 
three things I want to take away from the woman on the Samaritan woman before I talk about the other woman that the Lord have challenged me to share with you about. One, the word that go back to Jesus had to. It meant that Jesus was pursuing her. He intentionally pursued her. I want you to write down, if you have a pen or something, Jesus intentionally pursues me. And if, if, if you are not saved yet, I want you to say Jesus is pursuing me. So if you know Jesus already, he's still pursuing you. He's pursued you, sorry. But if you don't know him, he's pursuing you. Right? So today, you are on this call. It's not by, oh, because Minister Crystal invite me or Minister Chev invite me or, you know, Minister Holt invite me. No. God is saying I'm intentionally backing you up in our corner today because you must fulfill my purpose on this earth. Jesus met that woman so that she can have an encounter with him so that her life can change from the promiscuity. Yes, in her case, it was a man. But in your case, it's something. And he's saying, turn away from that. And I want you to pursue purpose. Some of you cannot pursue purpose because you think your career is your purpose. Because you already spent almost thousand dollars at university, you already get that that big job, and you're making the money, and you live your quote unquote comfortable life. You know that you're empty. You know that God is calling you more, but you're so married to that, you will never able to walk into God's purpose because God's purpose might not come out how it expected to look. Mm. This, so the first one is Jesus is pursuing me, or Jesus pursued me. The second one is that I must get rid of my husbands, our husband. All of us have it. Hallelujah. Listen, I mean, said it, I mean, love phone. <laughs> I mean, said love phone. I remember one time when I'm a Christian, nice Christian girl, I mean, Jesus has sent my phone on my idol. What do you mean? No, God. It's like, you need to come off. You need to come off your social media for three months. No social media, no WhatsApp. If people want to talk to you, they need to call you or email. Three months. But at this time, you know, I'm safe. You know, me I send them time. Let me have WhatsApp group. I share devotional with you know. I may I share the gospel on the the um social media. I have me have blogs. We are, we are me, Jesus. I'm doing your work. We you mean I should come off. All right, even if I come off social media, God, WhatsApp is not a social media. Himself, I come off. I had to humble myself and recognize that my phone did become an idol. So sometimes idols might not creep up very obvious like hers. And I'm sure for her, it probably wasn't that. She didn't even realize it was that bad until she heard it out. You understand? Because the truth is, if she's an adulterer, that means that there's an adulterer man with her. But we focus on just what the woman did wrong. But we're not going here right now. We're talking about ourselves, right? The word of God said so we can only work out our own salvation with Christ. So we're not talking about the man them where you are and abuse are. Probably that's why she ended up with nine of them. Probably the one them were cheap on her. Probably one of them that beat her. We don't know. We can't speculate, right? Just as I say, we can't speculate. But the truth is, come on. No, no, most women, we don't, no matter how much we go, if we go through 10 and 20 men, we don't automatically go through so many. It's because why, why we go? Because we are looking for love and then they keep failing us. But we can't blame them, right? So, what is whatever is your idol? God is going to speak to you about that. Right? And then the final thing from that message is when she finally, we didn't reach so far, but when she finally had that encounter and she recognized Jesus as the Savior, the word of God says that she went into the town and preached the gospel. And people ran, the men came and many of them got saved. And Jesus spent a few days and preached the gospel, and many of the Samaritans got saved. For me, what that means is that God is sending you out, right? No. Ooh. 
Some of you are waiting for your pastor to call you up and anoint you. Mm, before you can walk in a purpose. Some of you want a prophet and go follow every church where prophetess this and prophetess that and prophetess this because you want a word, a word in the Bible. See the word there, Matthew 28, tell you, say, go ye into the world. So I don't, listen, I don't get in debates, but if woman can preach, a woman can preach, you know. But go up to the word and I see the lady have an encounter with God. She never go Bible school. She get an encounter. She run and men got saved. So Jesus is sending you right now. Your purpose must be fulfilled right now. So that's the third one. Right? I must go now. I must go now. You realize I'm not telling. I'm telling you your command. Jesus is pursuing you. Jesus has pursued you, right? Number two, again, when you think about, I must release my husbands, I must divorce my husbands. Then I must go now. This is you. I work out your own salvation. Not Kimisha, not Carol. Some of us focus on, oh, if Colleen, look, but Colleen, I do not know, or Shana, I do not know, or Velma, I do not know. Velma work out for salvation. Work out yours today. Today is a day of purpose for you right now. So I want to switch to go to the story um, of Mary. So Luke 1, and I won't get into it right now, but Luke 1, um, Minister Holt probably can go on it just very, very briefly, right? So Luke 1 um, is the, the book of Luke is when you really see the story of how Jesus' birth came. Right, we know that the angel went to Mary and said, Hey, blessed are you among women. We found you favored, right? Um, I found you favorable, and I want you to bring the son of the son of Christ that will save the world. Um, and she said, Hey, okay, God, let it be done as unto me. And later down, when she met Elizabeth, Elizabeth said to her, Hey, blessed are you found favored, right? Blessed are, blessed is she who believe the promises of God. So in my, I was meditating, I was like, Lord, I mean, I feel like the message is enough to stop at the story of, of um, the Samaritan woman. Why do you want me to bring up the woman, um, Mary? Of course, my love talk about Mary, because I tell you, Mary, like, I have a little jealous spirit against Mary when I pray about, because the level of Mary obedience, I'm going to reach there yet. Because I want somebody to think about at, let us not even think about her age. Because them say she's about 14, 15. Mind you, at that time, right now, I can't imagine having a baby at 14. Bless the Lord that we can have a baby older, right? <laughs> but in those times, right, you're, you're engaged to your nice bunununus husband, man, boy, sweet, like, you know, you're dead. Man, I'm going to talk about myself because I'm 30 odd, right? They in the church, I mean, I wait for my nice Bruno and the man come up. I plan my dream wedding and we're gonna go strong the castle, you know, man. With the two hundred, we plan the wedding and my wedding dressing you know, on. I get it from flight from Italy, you know. I'm gonna help my dream, you know. I'm gonna talk to me you now. You understand? I may plan my nice clean honeymoon car. We are gonna do a European tour, you know, man. We are gonna go. Paris and then we're gonna go Milan and we don't know if we speak them language there, but it's okay. We have Google for translate for us, right? Plan my nice us clean us ban when we are way pan all long. My love Jesus. I'm actually glad because I Jesus give me the husband. Cause a long time I pray. In the middle of almost about well, two weeks before the wedding, Angel. I mean, I understand how she stand up and talk to an angel. Come, I'm not sure if me see angel, make a think I do pay, make a run. But that's a different thing, <laughs> right? Right? Because in Jamaica, we see one light. If we see a light, I run, we know for run, right? But Marita, she stand up and talk to the angel, and the angel say, "Hey, you're gonna, you're gonna be pregnant. The Holy Spirit is gonna come upon you, and you're gonna call, carry the Savior." Now. The word of God says that Mary did ponder the things. But we never say Mary, Mary said no but. Mary never said, but Wolande, 
Welcome to Joseph. Welcome to my night at two weeks from now. Joseph, my, my, so I'm going to cancel my Paris trip, Jesus. Probably I'm married. I'm just putting, all right. Say, imagine, you know, Mary a nice, clean work. We know, we just make up a scenario, right? She's not a nice, clean job after she gets her degree. And she not. I'm not, I'm not understand. And then the word of God said, Mary not asked Jesus. She just pondered it. And she said, yes, Lord, let your will be done. I want to talk to you. Somebody talk, talk to you. Would that have been your response? I want to stop telling lie. Can I hear me? Now you can say, no, I want to talk to me. Would that have been your response? It couldn't. Because the first thing, the truth is, here's how I'm going to keep me off of the life. No, because many of you, you're quote, you're, the, girl, the person sitting beside you at work, don't know Jesus Christ and God have been telling you to go and pray for her and you refuse to. Mm. But you can't talk to your neighbor. You can't share the gospel with your neighbor. But you think you're going to say yes when God purpose call you? Many of you still are malicious. Your, your parents, your father, your mother for neglect you. And you think so when God call it a purpose, your first response is going to be yes? Let us not lie to ourselves. Because many of you have gotten commands from God that you have not said yes to. You are there and God said, pray for this person. And you start ask, is that the devil? Oh, is that my mind? Oh my God, is that the devil? Why the devil that tell you to pray for somebody? No, <laughs> like, or give, give, give the last of what you have. Get up and give. Some of you are in communities where you know, say, some of the young girls, mm -hmm. they, they have lunch money for their school. They must struggle. You have young girls in your church want to know such struggle and have to look at extra. And you can't even bless them with a lunch money. God said, bless her with a lunch money this week. But I make nobody know, because when I give you right on your life, and must know, right? But instead, when we say, Lord, is that you? Let's talk to me now. <laughs> so I always tell people, I, I jealous of Mary, because I'm not going to tell a lie. The mo most times when Jesus gives me a command, my first response is not, Lord, let it be done according to your word. My first response is, God, where am I going to get the money from? Ooh. God sent us to write the book. Oh, God, but I'm not have the money. God said, for start a business. But Lord, I don't know anything about business. I'm going to talk. Okay. Some, uh, see somebody confess. my love question God. No, nothing is wrong with asking God question because he's your father. But let us be real. Our automatic response to the call is not, yes, let it be done as you say. So let's Put it together now. May I wrap up, right? Let's put it together. Mary, Samaritan, what is, does this have to do with your purpose? As I was in my book, um, that's the second book that I wrote, Empowered for Such a Time as This, right? The Lord shared with me three tenets to purpose. And let me just dispel some things about purpose. Your purpose is not your calling. It, your purpose is not necessary a career. Your, purpose, your career can be a part of your purpose, but it, it's not necessary. It. Your purpose is not just to write a book, to be a minister, you know, to take a mic, you know, to start a business, to start a blog. A lot of people see purpose as just those things. The first thing about purpose is that one, it must glorify God. Whatever you do that brings glory to God is a part of his purpose. It means that this thing about expecting this one purpose to happen is, 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 is fallacy. Like, I just have this one purpose to fulfill. I don't, that's not how the Lord has downloaded it in my spirit. We have a calling, which is the specific assignment. So some of us have been given a specific assignment, which we call a calling. But your purpose is what you do to bring glory to God. So if you're a mother, 
That's a part of your purpose because you're expected to raise your child in the way of the Lord. A part of your, if you're a wife, you're supposed to respect your husband, submit to him. Whoa, submit to your husband is a part of your purpose. Crystal, come out for the call. Oh, yes, it is. Love your neighbor as yourself. That is a part of your purpose. Give without expecting to receive is a part of your purpose. So whatever I do, if you're a school teacher right now, one of the things in the book, the Lord shared me is that where you are right now, you're positioned for purpose. Stop telling yourself that you don't know your purpose. Where you are at right now is a part of the purpose that God has for your life. What you need to do is open your discernment to say, Lord, where am I at right now? How can I bring you glory? Yes, I know you have a specific assignment for me and I want to find out that assignment, but that's not the only purpose that you have. You are positioned where you are at right now. This is why we can talk about the past. I see uh, Mr. Olsen, your past cannot disqualify you for your purpose. It cannot. No matter how many times you run away, no matter how much time you backslide, you cannot be this, your past cannot disqualify you. Your title, no matter what you would have gone through, has, cannot disqualify you. Because purpose is why God placed you on this earth. And the first thing that he placed you on this earth to do is to bring you glory. And the question you need to ask is, if, how can I bring glory to God right now in this situation, in this, in this season that I'm in, wherever I'm at? The work that you get up tomorrow morning, someone on a drug for God to work. You know why God now will give you another work? Because you have not found the reason why God has placed you on this job find out that reason and allow him to use you where you're at so you can be promoted if you have not been feeling faithful here what's going to happen you're going to go into another job expecting this ray of sunshine and then you go and you are, you are repeat the same cycle and you're wondering why you're repeating the same cycle because you have not found a purpose in this season and the assignment and the test are going to come until you get it. So stop, get up every Sunday, every Monday morning. Okay, Lord, me eat a job, I'm me eat my supervisor. One, you're not supposed to eat your supervisor because God tell us if you love everybody. So that means you can't walk in a purpose because you don't love. Mr. Old, I'm sure they, they don't want me back on their, their, their platform after this. Many of you are praying to God for a financial breakthrough. Let me, me tell you, I'm looking at the mirror, I talk to myself. God, give me a financial breakthrough. Give me a financial breakthrough, God. But then when God do bless you with some money, you don't know how to store this money. You don't tithe, you don't give, but you are rich. I you don't know what to do with the money. God cannot trust you. How is he going to give you more if he cannot trust you with a little? God want a care. You know why God's not giving someone a care? Because if you get care on two hype. And the car go, car go become an idol. And you go walk, you go drive past your church sister. You know you're not going to see him community. You're going to make rain a fall. And you're not going to ask her if she can come into the car. God cannot bless you. Everything he's going to bless you with is to be a blessing and to bring him glory. So it's not a judgment. Listen, I talk to myself, you know. I tell you the truth. So me get like every time if I give a word, like I'm uncomfortable because I know say I'm gonna show me me first. You might show me me first. And if I just go up on my knees and say, God, let help me to do it right the next time. Some of we as Christian women I beg God for husband. But have we been faithful to the true husband, Jesus our husband? Are we spending enough time with this husband, Jesus our right? Are we taking care of our bodies? Are we taking care of ourselves? But we want God for sending good, good, nice, clean man to you. What are you going to do with him? Some of you don't have a prayer life and we want a nice, clean, Christian man. What are you going to do with him? 
mind you, we have a different opinion about some of the Christian man them. But now go there. But the nice one we gotta feel, right? Some of you, how you dress, how you talk to people, the things where you say about your pastor, Ooh, Holy Spirit. Some of you think you can sing and you should lead the, the praise team, but you are bitter against the current praise, team, praise and worship leader. Mm -hmm. God don't want you to go and bleed upon his people. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you one thing. I don't want anybody to leave this and feel condemned. It's if you feel condemned based on what I'm saying, then that is the devil right there. You are supposed to feel convicted. What conviction says is I'm convicted, Lord, but I'm repenting and I'm turning to you. And I want you to show me your truth and I want to walk into your truth. Condemnation says, you see, we shall come chop wood for me. And you see that some of business about them Christian people, you know, because the whole of them are hypocrites. I can't go to church because the whole of them are hypocrites. But you're hypocrite too. Because who love gossip yeah. like you? Who love talk about the first lady? Me say, first lady, she, you see, she, she. Hmm. But deep down, God won't call you for be a first lady, but because you can't honor your first, current first lady, you can't walk in that for become a first lady. Some of you want car, but when your church sister buy for your car, ooh, me say, every minute she take a picture up on Instagram, I come put up her car like a she one can get car. Listen. Cancel that bad mind spirit. Celebrate each other. I want to remember, thank you, Holy Spirit. I want us to remember when David, remember David was anointed king from he was 12 years old. And I love to share the story of David as an example of purpose because the truth is, if you remember the story of David, David was a shepherd. After he was a shepherd, he was he became a warrior because he killed Goliath. And after him killed Goliath, after remembering that he was anointed as king from I was young. And then he was he, he go back after he get anointed as king, them send him straight back in at the shepherd. You can imagine some of we don't get the tight, some of we get the title, we just feel like we must run in it already. But there's a preparation process that David had to go through. So him anointed, but him go back. Then he went and David ended up um killing Goliath so he became a warrior after he was a warrior right he became a worshiper because evil spirit upon Saul and obviously David was a man that could sing and you know him could have do him look a thing and the word of God says him play him harp and the evil spirit will leave Saul so he had a purpose there remember David was the king he was anointed to be the king and he had to serve the king then he became, he, he went on the run because now Saul, the bad man spirit in a Saul, start rise up and he had to flee. And then it took a while for him to take the throne. Now, I want us to think about it. Was David ultimate purpose? Was David purpose to become a king? No. Because he had, there was purpose in him when he was a shepherd. Remember, he talked about ensuring that him kill the, the, the bear and the, the lion. And that was what prepared him saying, could I go kill Goliath? And then when he, when he was in the army and they were able to kill Goliath and he became a warrior, you know, the Israelites had a lot of victories. So at a point when he was a warrior, he had purpose. Then after, he had another assignment to serve his leader, the same leader that ended up being bad mind to him. Right? And then after, so I want, here's what I wanted to see, that every era of your life serve purpose. That's what I wanted to take away. There's a purpose for every era. So for somebody that's asking the question, but how can I really walk out my purpose, woman of God? One, 
it starts by seeing yourself being positioned where you're at and starting to ask the Lord, where I'm at, God, how can I bring you glory? That's one. No, before you get to that, sorry, scratch up. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Forgive me, Lord. Um, the three call to purpose. The three call to purpose. One, the call to salvation. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you cannot fulfill your purpose on this world. Let me put that. Let me back up and put that out there. I know that I watch Oprah Winfrey and many of the, listen, I'm in the self-help industry, right? I'm in, I, I do coaching on the, all of these things. And they will tell you, all, Oprah and all of these people tell you you can't find a purpose, but it's a lie. You cannot find a purpose outside Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. There's no way because he's the ultimate, he's the creator. And the creator Amen. would know why he created a person, right? So let me back up. So the first call, and I talk about it in the book, Empowered for Such a Time as This, is a call to purpose. The call to salvation, sorry, right? So after you accept Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior, no matter when nobody tell you, you cannot, let me tell you, you cannot. So once you find, you, per, you find out, who you, you get saved, no, you can't talk about purpose. Then you have the call to identity. What is a call to identity? That is now God stripping you from all the things that you think you need, all the things of the world that you know you were taught, and now teaching you who you are in Him, teaching you how to be a child of God. Many of you have daddy issues, so because you don't go through the call, because you don't go through the call to identity, you find say you have you struggle to have see God as a father. Many of us, we 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 still see ourselves as oh. Just not chatting out woman here and a dance girl here. And the call to identity is that call to say, Lord, teach me how to know who I am in you. Because let me tell you, if you don't know who you are in, in Christ, this is why a lot of ministers, them, them, and this is where also the, the call to sanctification and the processing comes a lot about. Because now you have to get rid of the idols in that time, right? Because what starts to happen if you go and get find out this quote-unquote purpose okay God come up for preach this is why a lot of preachers fall because they have not had a foundation in Christ they focus on the gifts which is the next one is a call to impact or the call to purpose we are now you know your gifts and you start using your gifts to bless others a part of your purpose here's for somebody because some of you think that your only purpose is to be a wife some of you think your only purpose is to be a mother and to work at your job. When the truth is, even though, yes, there's purpose in that, if you're not impacting life, then you're not fulfilling purpose. God has called us to serve each other. There must, you are called to leave a mark on this earth. You must share the gospel of Jesus Christ. It might not be with a mic, but it must be in some way. So I'm going to close with my, my testimony. So I've not shared my testimony because I honestly, I've not really felt led right now, but just as synopsis, as I mentioned, I grew up in the inner city, right? I grew up in, Mac I was born in Maxfield, um, lived in Kencott, lived in jungle. So for, for me, I tell people that I, even though I was born in a level of poverty, I felt like I was rich in love. Because a lot of, I, I really didn't know how poor I was until probably I reached, like, really high school when you realize, you know, oh, my God, like, your friends are getting $500 lunch money and your mother is giving you $100. And your mother give you $100 from first farm to fifth farm. Like, my mother, they beside me, my just while she knows, says she did make me dead for hungry enough, enough days. <laughs> right? But the truth is, you know, one of the things I appreciated with my parents was that they taught me very early about the value of education and knowing that, hey, the best, the only way to come out of the inner city is to get an education. So I did the right things. I went to high school. I excel in school. You know, I always come first and second or third. If I if don't come third, I go start ball. Come my father probably go tell me, you know, um, say, yeah, yeah, like my father was very strict. Right. So excel in high school, graduated from Alpha, you know, shout out if there are any Alphians here. Right. Um, as the top girl in the school that year. And, you know, I'm, I'm I knew 
like I knew that I had to make it. I knew that I, I wanted to become a politician because I wanted to serve. I wanted to become a lawyer because I chat too much. <laughs> right? So me here, so I chat too much. I'm here, so because I'm a love chat, I forgot to be a lawyer. Like, okay, I'm a love debate. So become a lawyer and get into politics. I've, obviously, in during high school, I changed my career 10 million times, right? Because I want to be a chef, because I love my belly. I want to be a pilot, because I love travel. But I know so anyway, no matter what I do, I go bust one day, right? I know that. Here's what the, the thing um, that I tell people though, is while I was doing the right thing, educationally, the world was, was teaching me the things of the culture. So I was living a double life. So I was this girl that was very educated. I, you know, I was working, I was doing my thing. But the truth is, I was very promiscuous. I have multiple boyfriends. Um, I mean, at one point, like it got so bad. I remember probably I was about 18, just before I gave my life to before I give my life to the Lord. Being a man song. So I'm from Maxi Jungle. So being a man song, we not go like on the but on the know the song. So I'm gonna say, you know, girl have but um I forget a girl who live in Maxfield. Um, you know, that song they get a girl of the big yeah, that song they will be the man sing. So growing up, you know, say give we stripe. Cause me a ghetto girl and me a me a me a me, a, me a come from Maxfield and be the man say right are you and spice say you have to take a girl man and lady say say yeah right so even though I was educated the truth is the world was was telling me and I was doing another thing I tell people I didn't even know that sex before marriage was wrong until like, I was adult because I didn't grow up in church I believed in God you know we used to pray. Um, you know, I've prayed and God have come true for me, but uh, I'm not sure about a Christian thing yet. I became very promiscuous. I remember at one point being a man had a song that says, um, and I'm not really a big man fan, but you know, um, when I say, girl, I have enough man, me used to say, like legit, me used to say, girl, I have enough man, man in a bungle, because you need a man for peer. Pay for my school fee, a man for carry me out, for buy my Brazilian ear. Hello? Hello? What do you mean? One man, one man cannot finance my lifestyle. Not realizing that was the enemy trying to rob me of my purpose. Trying to, and the truth is when you're in sin, everybody around you are in sin. There's no light. So all of you are walking in darkness and feel like the darkness is light when you are in darkness. And like that, you know, when I, I got saved, I got baptized, you know, after I, was, I had two boyfriends, the two of them left me and me end up at church. I mean, I said, God, you know, say, you know, I know my life, this man, I like who me become, me, I go get saved, get saved. Did not want to walk away uh, totally surrender the things of the world so I was in church and I was partying still I was fornicating still so I got pregnant in church and it was true that you know there's somewhere that I just I remember and this is where I like I tell people I had my like Samaritan woman moment because the truth is I was a, I, I was a Christian I was going to Bible studies you know after I had my daughter I was a good Christian girl I was doing the right Christian things, but I felt empty. Mind you, I was 24. I'd accomplished all the things that I had put on, that I wanted to accomplish. I had the house. I bought my first house at 24, right? And for us, it was a big deal in my family because I was the first person in my family to travel overseas, right? Because my mother never even had a bird paper until she was 40. So if you, know, if you don't have a bird paper, then you can have a, 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 a passport. So like nobody not, like me the first person to travel as the first person to get a university degree when i when we bought when i bought my house it was the first time we live like in a house that is not a board house with, in, with inside bathroom because we used to outside tile it so i accomplished all the things i got this nice job i was senior procurement officer yeah and girl have a degree now and i do our masters clean and then we go get engaged so it can't be a christian no more i get married you know man 
So I'm going to get engaged. I'm going to connect with my high school sweetheart. You know, I tell you the story nice, you know, because he loved me from a 14 year old. I'm going to England and him come back from here, Jamaica for real. I'm going to engage. I'm going to. I'm a Christian. I'm a nice Christian girl. I'm a pastor. Fit. And I remember just sitting one day and it just never felt enough. It just never felt enough. And I remember I started to say, God, is this all there is to life? And I saw a quote on social and on, on, on Facebook, I believe, that says there's more to life than just paying bills. And I remember just, again, there was nothing wrong. There was really nothing that I could say that was wrong in my life at the time because I'd made my family proud. You know, I had a beautiful daughter. I was engaged. You know, I bought my fr- bought my house i was the first person in my family to buy a car like i'd accomplish it but i just felt like is this all it is this it and then i started to see the lord like god i don't know why i do this but you know i'm glad i do it still but sometimes like i don't know you know when you ask sometimes when you ask god for things be prepared him to answer because i said lord is there more to life than this and I remember just start just typing the word purpose. And I was like, is there more to life than this? And he's like, come into a new relationship with me. Just, I know you're safe. I know, because me, me, me stop partying you know, man. I'm stop fornicating. I'm me, me, all right, you know. And then I started to ask the Lord, is the person that I'm supposed to marry? Is he really my husband? And God said, no. What do you mean? And I just watch. And this is the thing about answering the call to purpose. Because I just watch in the initial stage, it felt like everything was just falling apart because now my engagement got called off. And, you know, I, I just felt like, all my friends started to turn against me and you know it just it just never felt comfortable but the Lord was saying I want you to choose to love me over everything else and everything Amen. else got tested and some of you I'm gonna tell you the call to answer the call to purpose you're going to have to choose Jesus all the time Amen. you have to choose him over and over again you have to choose him over again. And I watch my friends, like friends that I love dearly, just turn against me. Thank God for my little bonus. You know, that's why I have always shout her up, Terry. You know, that really, really, you know, probably one of the few friends that stuck with me, even on this Christian journey. Even though they didn't, they, they never, like my family did think some started getting mad probably can't know after a few years so after just to wrap up the story though you know after i started to seek the lord you know um i remember being called a woman of purpose and how may go impact nations a, a prophet um I'm, I'm a gentleman prophesy omega impact nations i mean i look upon him like what do you mean <laughs> you know like like i could not i could not imagine that i'll be on this call talking to you guys because I was so afraid of speaking like when I, they, they, they nominated me for valedictorian and I tell him I like I would never be seen speaking in public like I would not become a valedictorian because I would not speak on a mic that was the enemy just to try to shut me up and then I started the Lord just say and this is how again the, the woman of a summer because when I had this this it, this like new encounter with God and I just started to just tell people on social media about my past. Oh, I did an abortion. Oh, me did. Um, I was in a seven. Um, I, I I wrote a blog about being the other woman. Um, wrote the book. I remember even when I wrote my book. Um, and the Lord said I must include the abortion. Me, I said that now. Nah, me not nah tell nobody that. Cause that time when me was sixteen, that very that that would have never. And he's like, you have to. And I remember about a week before the book came out I had to call my parents and tell them because my father almost think I'm a saint 
I think my father thought I was a set. Like he really, like when him hear my testimony about me having enough man, my father wonder who is this person? Because <laughs> as far as he's seen, he has never even seen me. Like when we get pregnant at 25, yeah, my daughter like me, 24, 25, my father's like, you had boyfriend? <laughs> right <laughs> but i mean it's so easy to mask because i was doing the right things i was going to school i was getting education it's so easy to mask who you are based on all the things that you would have accomplished and god is saying i god had to strip me this is why i'm not ashamed to talk about anything because god had to show me identity teach me my identity in him not anything that i've done and, you know, where I'm at right now, writing nine books, speaking all over the world. I mean, I mean, I've been invited to speak on platforms in Australia and podcasts all over the world. In my podcast, Diary of a Jesus Girl podcast, is in 45 countries, women in countries, I can't even call out the name. Because I was, with, I just said yes. And the truth is, I was with, I was with my child's father. And that for me, when I was leave, when I was supposed to leave him, I remember telling him, hey, I'm choosing Jesus. And him laugh. Him laugh. Because he's like, yeah, right. <laughs> you, like, you're going to leave me? Because me, I tell you the way I did love him. Like, you hear Bruder Ma say, I will catch a grenade for you. A lit, like, me, I just go say, I grenade for him. Name time. At you, me, I and somehow I do it the same way. And I had to go to the Lord and say, God, I love the money more than you. Why? Because I was willing to please the man more than God. And God teach me how to love you more. And it is how oh, I found purpose is to start looking at the things that I love to do. I like to write. I like to speak. I like to mentor. I love teen girls. So my, my purpose started with me doing mentorship for teen people teen girls in my community. I went to my pastor and I wrote a proposal. I said, you know, can I do a, a little conference? And, you know, I started to host conferences and I just started to say yes. And I remember just every time I read the story of um, a Mary and every time I hear God say, you're going to keep a conference. 100 women are going to come and I'm like, nobody don't know me. I'm just uh, last year, them see me in a party, a dirty wine. And who are going to come at my party? Who are going to believe me? Say me really safe now. And when, when I held the conference over, people fly down to come to the conference God provided. And I just had to say yes. When the Lord said, Crystal, you need to leave your nine, your nine to five job. I never say yes, same time. <laughs> I didn't. Because I'm like, but God, you give me the house, who will pay the mortgage? My daughter will go prep school at who will pay, pay for go school? Who will pay the, me? Well, just go buy a new car. Who will pay the, the car loan? What do you mean to leave my job? Eventually, I had to say yes. Yes. So, I've been on for a while, I know. But I want somebody that's listening. The call to purpose it's not a one-way thing. It's not a one-time thing. Yes, I know many of you are operating on what you think is a purpose, but I want you to go to the Lord and say, God, is there more? For some of you, God has given you things to birth. Stop asking him where the money will come from. Stop asking him, oh, me? Like, I remember ask. this is why I wrote the book, my, my book, Dear Insecurity, because I kept asking God, who, me? God, if you get to say, uh, me, I want to get a girl from Dunga Maxfield, like, who, me? Like Gideon. And he had to say, this is why the call, understanding the call to identity is important, because I, I had to learn to not look at what I've done wrong or who I am, but look at who God has called me to be to do this. Not to look at the resources, but remember that he's the I am that I am. He own a cat on a toes in ill. Like there's no lack in him. Whatever God is con. When I was writing my first book and I said to the Lord, like God, God, like, oh, oh like, oh, make a pay for publish a book. And just like that, somebody just called me. Hey, Crystal, you know, you look like a good one on social media. We are offer you like a, a airline, a major airline in Jamaica 
somebody that was doing their marketing say oh you must see you post a lot on social media you know you always a post like you want a social media job and just like that just start paying me twenty five thousand dollars a month to post a major airline in jamaica was posting doing their social media for and god used that money to help me to pay for the book then people start inviting me. The more I share on social media, people start inviting me to talk. And when I go talk, they might pay me. I may say, really? And they used to take out, remember in a five grade, you know, when we used to talk, no, the teacher used to tell me for me to pay $10 every time I talk. Yes, my teacher. Like I'm a prince, like I love her now, but I tell her so she did wicked. Like she paid, like she used to have a pay ten dollar. So the look at fifty dollar I get, I have to walk home enough days. Can't buy time me the fifty dollar don't. Can't be a talk me talk. No, I get paid to talk. Look at God. So no matter some of you are cooking, right? Probably gotta call if you have a little soup kitchen, right? Even if I just in your community every Sunday, you know some people in your community, you know, where you know them some old elderly, them have nobody for cook for them. Like purpose. Listen. Women of God, women that are listening, your purpose must impact lives. It must. It must impact lives. Listen, the fulfillment that you get when when you tell me for talk about purpose, this I will light me up. Because I get up every day and know that I'm walking in purpose. Does it mean that every day is great? Sometimes I can't bother with the attack. Like every time if I write a new book, I stress out because the, the level of warfare will come with it. I can't, like, I can't, like if you have to write a book, the warfare will come with it. Or when if I go do a preaching assignment, I can't bother the warfare. But then the word of God says, you know what? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So you cannot be afraid. But I get up every single day and know that I'm living purposefully. Why? Because I choose to love God first. I choose to answer the call. I choose to ensure that my identity is found in him. I choose to release the husband name every day. Kind of just one time I saw somebody say, you know, she, she released the man name and, you know, she, she, but listen, every day. Because at any moment, any idol can climb up in your life. Any idol, any time, just you know, I just have to come back and say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've put something before you. Use your gifts. Stop waiting a pastor for, for sending you out there. Nobody, nobody don't anoint me as minister day. I'm telling you that. I've no, no, nobody don't anoint me. Me no want to anoint. Me no want to. No, the word of God says minister means servant. That's the reason why I use the word minister because in Hebrews, it says when they were use the word minister, they were talking about servants. So because I'm a servant, you can call me a minister because I'm called to serve. But I don't need a prophetess. I don't need, I don't, no. Because like the Samaritan woman, I just know, come see a man. He changed my life. And I can tell you if Jesus, this is a final point I will make. If Jesus wasn't real, I would have run go back into the world a long time. Cause sin did nice. When I go, Christian people like, oh my God, oh my God, like don't say that sex before marriage is not nice and it will lie. They 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 they, they spy sang them and what was when you walk out in a video like, me not gonna lie, me did enjoy myself. Me not gonna tell a lie. When we not battery the shots, me did me did not enjoy myself. Me not gonna tell a lie. But I found. That in when I look back, I didn't have peace. I didn't have purpose. I didn't have life. Because the word of God says Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. So life is only found in Jesus Christ. And it's true purpose. That, that's why I can remain steadfast in him. Not because crystal powerful, but because the Holy Spirit empowers me. Oh. Me not powerful. Holy Spirit empowers me. Me not great. Holy Spirit is great through me. And that for me is worth saying yes to Jesus all over again. So I pray something that I would say would provoke you. There's so much more. So much more. Life 
light, love, gifts in Jesus Christ. If it, if it wasn't so, I would not be here. Come with a run, go back to the world. I would have run back to the world. Based on how treat church people they treat me, I should have run back to the world because the, um, the level of attacks that I've gotten from people in church, like we don't have time right now. But Jesus should be the foundation. And when you find that foundation and find that love, purpose, purpose must come to life. God bless you. Here, and I wanted to ask Minister Bill a very simple question. But it's a question that, that I have beaten myself up about many times. Because even though I know God's love, even though I know where I am at is not where I am to be, but he's still manifesting his love towards me. I am I just asking. And I voiced it today that sometimes it feels as if God has forgotten. I know, I would just like to ask her if she's ever felt like that. I'm not talking about people. I'm not talking about brethren, pastor, anybody. I'm just talking about standing up in the face of everything. In the face of praying, yes, when you have to pray, in the face of doing all that you have to do. And then you say, God, I really feel, is it that you have forgotten me? Have you asked a question, Minister? Right, so, Miss Minister, this is Miss Velma, right? Mm -hmm. Miss Velma? Yes. All right. Um, what is it that you want God to do for you? What is it that you want him to do for you? My life needs, I need the manifestation of God in my life. What does I that need, look like for you? Huh? How would that look? How will you know that God is manifesting his life in you? I know. I look at the struggles. I look at the situations. I look at me literally feeling that I am not doing anything for God. And I say, God, what, what is it you want me to do? What, what are you calling me? What are you wanting? I'm listening to you and I'm hearing that purpose. It's not any one thing. For a long time, I thought my purpose was to be an intercessor. But then other things started including into my life. And I realized that the system wasn't even fulfilling my void. I know I am like a vacuum. Just, I just feel, and if you call me to pray, I pray. I just feel like there is so much more of God that I want, that I am not accessing. All right. So I'm just going to, again, my, how I share things might be a little bit unorthodox based on how church probably used to. But, and this is for everybody. So many of us look at our Christian life, this, our life with God as this taking, like, you know, a proper life. So God, I'm just a servant, I'm just a slave, use my Lord, and which is good. But remember the first thing you are to God, you are his daughter first. You are his daughter first. Let me give me a second, I'm gonna put on my earphones. You are God's daughter first. And because you are, I want you to think about it. The word of God says that if you, if your father, right, that is sinful, that would do good things for you. So my father, Chris, love me. And Chris, wouldn't, if me say Chris, I'm hungry, him now go give me, 
him not give me aki for eat. Why? Because no man like aki, I eat aki. He might go probably cook some ton car meal and some curry chicken or whatever because he's a father. Understand that God is not trying to withhold his purpose from you. He's not trying to, to, to yes, and there is an enemy that is out there to kill, steal, and destroy. And the truth is, there is going to always be a level of persecution that comes with this walk. But Miss Velma, here's my challenge to you. I want you to stop saying, just don't, just don't pray like you're begging God. Pray like he's your father. God, I need to, and, and even when you say, I want to see a manifestation, what does that look like? How would you know? Right? So I want you to talk to God like, like, like he's your friend, like he's your father, like, like he want, like more than anything, God wants you to know your purpose. Everybody here, he wants you to know the purpose, you know. He's not trying to withhold his purpose from you. He's not. He's not that kind of God. So one, if you're feeling like God has called you as an intercessor, or I don't know, first thing for, to find a purpose, what is it that you are passionate about? Sit down. I want you to sit down and ask and think about what does Velma love to do? What, what makes your heart light up? What you see yourself doing for God? Right? And then what the word, God, the word of God says that he will give you a home shine. Because a lot of us are waiting, waiting for God to give us, you know, like the Moses burning bush experience. Oh my God, you know, Moses go what? No. For some of us, he will give us a home shine. Right? So, like when I started the teen, the teen girls mentorship thing, honestly, I can't go tell them to say, oh God, tell me for God, do you? No. I know that when I prayed, God said, what do you like to do? I love teen girls. I love mentor teen girls. So I started to think, okay, oh, I can get some girls in my community, you know, and I can teach them about them confidence and, you know, and, and, and I didn't have money, but I'm like, all right, oh, I can do it and probably ask the church to partner with me and you understand? So, Miss Velma, what I'm seeing is that God wants to reveal it to you and once you start to walk, do one thing and then you're going to you get another unction for do something else. And then you get another unction. Another thing is to serve. Okay. All right. I love to pray. Probably ask Minister Old, do you guys have an intercessor team? Can I join an intercessor team? You know, so you can learn more about intercessor, but also be praying. So for everybody that's listening now, from, I would say when it comes on to purpose, one is always the things that you're passionate about, but also be willing to take the first step to do something towards that. But Miss Velma, God wants to tell you more. And the truth is, I, I feel like he has been saying some things to you. You just feel like you don't know if it is him. You're not, you feel like you're not sure. Yeah. But let me tell you, the enemy don't want it. You see, oh, you check, you know, God different from the enemy's voice. Of course, the word of God says, my sheep knows my voice and no other voice you follow. But the first thing is, the enemy not tell you to pray for nobody. The enemy not gonna tell you to give to nobody. Most of the time, our, our own will don't even want to give. Like, think about it. Do Amen, I, yes. You know, like, in my own self, mm, I really want. But, I want you to just, just look at the things you're passionate about and just start doing that, however that look like for you. Start dreaming again, Miss Velma. You're not too old to, to dream. You're not too, you're not too, you're not, oh, me not, but me not the education like them young amen, people. Amen, you know, amen, me not, amen. Me not, me not, me not have no, <laughs> me not have no qualifications like them young people. Like the devil is a liar. Yes. He who call you qualifies you. What? So I want you, the first thing I want you to do is tackle that identity piece. Go into the word and say what God has said about you. I say what God has said about, I cannot dead for hungry. Why? It's, 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 it's impossible for me to dead for hungry because the word says that if, um, my people shall not be seen begging bread. What? The word of God says that. This is why Luke, I want you to go and read Luke 1, 45. Amen. Where it says, blessed is she who believes in God's promises. If you know God promises him, cannot lie. 
if God, if you go to school right now, you can't finish your school, pay a school fee. What? What do you mean? God, I'm not, I'm not supposed to can't pay my school fee. Me as a daughter. You own everything. The devil is a liar. 